What's up, what's up my good people society? I hope mko sawa. Manze, you know, kitu moja nataka kumshow. One thing I'll tell you that do you know I can only tell you so many stories eh na hizo wa endless watu ni letea story some people wanakamu wananipigia story zao saa zingine na chapa research and then I put in my own wisdom in those stories skatai they're very entertaining na pia ziko very educative but nimekuwa nikimpatia hizi story for long na nitaendelea kumpatia no doubt i'll keep on giving you good stories but i think sasa let's take it another level eh let's start now taking you to the field mnaona venye mimi mwambia story za biz zile vitu zote nyusikia za biz na mwambia story za nini story za kujenga biashara story za you know entrepreneurship how about sasa i'll start taking you on a journey and that is through documenting the process process yangu na team yangu tukiwa out there in the field and today tutaanza na kuenda kwa mentor wetu sasa so zingine we might try to tell you that we are so good at something ama we might tell you, you might see us as gurus in many things especially myself lakini msidanganywe i go to mentors i have mentors in atlanta au ni wa america wa huku and they are millionaires they've done it but on this particular episode the mentor we have in rally ni mkenya anaitwa Marian ana company yake na mtamsikia tu kwa e episode so from now on i'll be taking you to the field and see exactly how business is being conducted and how we are growing and the direction we are taking as good people society ndio by the time tutakam kumwambia kuna land hapa tunanunua ama kuna bnb pale tunanunua mujoin in hamtakuwa strange kwa idea zetu na hamtaona hamtakuwa na maswali nyingi juu we will document our process of growth our process of starting the next business cuz tumefanya nyingi kama hii banana land media it's a business by itself but now we are taking things to another level na tunazi take to another level with the whole team ya good people societies that is kangere esther you know mimi my spouse wao and many more guys out there that tuna work now na pole pole we'll start absorbing the very serious people tunaona wa good people society when you are very willing to join us na pia itakam one time after he level tutaingia hiyo level sasa ya ku involve everyone who wants to join good people society investments na i'm telling you follow the process of becoming follow he process ini behind the scene tulienda kuchukua advice one of our many times see you meet but he to me document and we will keep on doing that na pia ka unataka episode zote ndio you learn so much from what this episode will give you please please go to the youtube channel the official one ya good people society So you go to YouTube Good People Society of course link iko hapo kwa description go to Good People Society YouTube and hit that subscribe button now hit your bell button ya kuku pay notification every time we release a video so my good people society let it not be only me telling you stories and me just giving you wisdom come with me and let's learn in the field together and also as we grow let us now start planning to grow together very soon we'll call all of you tuanze kununua mashamba huku na manyumba na kila kitu tufanye mambo tufungue ma studio kama hii tuko about kufungua na here we are with Marian who will give us some nuggets about how she runs her business 
Karibuni. Hello. Hey, how, how are you? you? I am good. How are you? Good, good, Francis. Francis, can you give hugs? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What's your name? This is uh, Mariana. Mary, I've Mary, seen you several think, times oh. in the community with Sam and other oh, people, but yes. I've never known your name. Amazing. So. Thank you for making the so. time for us. What's the name again? Francis. Francis. Yes. Francis. I'll never People forget. know me as Cags, but Francis is Kags. easier. Yes. Kags, Francis. Yes. I will not forget. It's yes. good to meet you. Good to meet you. So this is uh, your space? This is my space here. Okay. I moved here just a few months ago. Oh. I was in another location, so okay. I'm still making it what I want it to be. Okay. I've had several locations in this area. I've actually been working in this area for since 2006. Two. Okay. So I've been okay. in the Nidal area okay. generally. Okay. Okay. Living here and working, and working here, here, I don't like to commute. So yes. my commute has always been like five minutes from okay. the house, ten yeah. minutes yeah. maximum. Okay. So I've always been around, around here, here yes. but um, this is a new space I just occupied. Okay. I uh, still in formation, yes. but um, it's my home space now. Your home space. Yes. I can't wait to see it and I get to it. know a little bit more about what sure, you do. Sure, sure, sure. Come on in. Uzima Springs. Yes, actually, I'll Where tell you a little. Where come from? I yeah. will tell you a little bit about Uzima Springs. Yeah. My previous life, I was in wildlife conservation. Okay. And one of my favorite places was in Savo. Okay. East National yes, Park. Yes. Yes. Um, of course, I'm from Kenya. Yes. And I was in wildlife conservation. One of the best places I ever went to was called Uzi Mzima Springs. Mzima Springs. Mzima yes. Springs. Yes. The local people. Yes. There, you know, Taitas yes. and all those people yes. in that area. Yes. Love that area. They okay. call it the Spring of Life. Spring of Life. Okay. And I, I don't know how much you know about Savo area. It's uh, very, very dry. Yes, it is very But dry. in this one area, there's a very big lava flow. Okay. It's actually lots and lots of rocks but there's almost nothing there and then all of a sudden there's this little island okay. of nice slush bushes and yes. trees and and there's a little stream stream and it comes into this pot uh, it's like a pond like okay. a little lake yes the water is so clean you can see the bottom oh my gosh and uh they have a walk boat over okay over that yes. because it's in a national yeah, park in a national so they're yes. wildlife yes so they have a board over that and there's a picnic area so you can walk on that board and look down in the in, in the pond in the or what i call a small lake yes and you see all the life in there there are crocodiles yes. they are because it's clear you can see through. very clear and that's why they call it mzima ah, mzima springs mzima springs yes okay. because they call it the spring of life okay so I thought, you know, what I do really helps people to yes. get their life back. Yes. And I said, you know, it's my best place. It's my favorite place to be in Mzima, Sp mm. Mzima Springs. I'll call it Uzima Springs, yes. where people come to get their life back. Yeah. And it's life and it's, um, you know, it's wellness. Yes. So that's why I call my business Uzima Springs I, Wellness I love Center. the connection. <laughs> There's a story behind There's it. A, and that's why, I, and I love green. Yes. I, green gives me life. Vitality So and you'll life. find that most of the that time, say for today, I'm not in green. Yes. But green is my favorite that color. Is By the way, is Esther. I thought Esther, Esther was supposed to be Esther. here. She's she, always on time. You just mentioned she's here. <laughs> she's always on we time. We like extend grace to her. <laughs> yes, but today Thank she's you. late. She's late today. <laughs> but that's okay. At least yes. we haven't gone into the office yes, yet. Yes. So I want to welcome you to my office. All right. Thank we you. We don't so work much. on Sundays. That's why we have a close oh, side. We start side. work usually on. Ma we start work on Monday at okay. nine o'clock. So we are open from nine to six o'clock. Nine to six o'clock. Yes. So Now that I've I'm never, looking at you, I've seen you. Yeah, but we've never, we've never met, like, like met. introduced. So yes. this is this is a good yes. time to. Okay. So she's given us a the, the behind the story of her name. Yeah, Uzima. Yes. Yeah, so we'll check it out later. Okay, yeah, I want to invite you in. Right. Welcome, ladies. Come in. I've been working as a massage therapist yes. since 2003. Okay. So I've been in this business for a long time. Yes. And um, 
of, uh, I went to college here for massage therapy, okay. switching from wildlife conservation. I moved. I moved from DC where I worked for okay. the American University, okay. and I finished up there. Moved back to Kenya, and okay. then moved here ah, in 2000. 2000. Then went back to college in 2001 and two, and then now officially started work started. Okay. as a massage therapist. Yes. I did, did not you start straight business or you I passed? went straight to business. Oh my god. I was a business person in Kenya. Okay. I ran, I had a um patisserie, what's okay. a pastry yeah, shop. Pastries, yes. And I had a tour company. Ah, where I did ecotourism. Okay. I worked with students, mostly students from the US and other parts of the world. Yes. And I'll bring them on educational tours okay. to Kenya. Okay. You know, working part of my work with American University was to run um uh what we call a field study program. Okay. So for eight years that I worked with the university, I would come over to DC area where the campus was, this Stanley campus of the American University yes. in DC. Yes. And I would work with the students okay. for a period of two months okay. in the fall semester. Okay. So we'd work from college for a period of time and then would go to Kenya okay. for Two, two weeks to four weeks, okay. depending on how long. The program itself was a three-week program oh, okay. in Kenya, where in Kenya. we did, uh, we we'll travel around the country yes. doing environmental work, visiting environmental and wildlife conservation areas, because yes. the program was on environment and development. Okay. It's, uh, that was the program okay. that we did the, prog the, the study program on. Okay. So they would participate in community work. Okay. So we went to schools and would paint, would fence we would do whatever the school needed us to do and then we would also do homestays where they had to learn how communities live yes. so i would pair two of them they say for instance they would go and stay with Esther's family okay. they would eat and drink and do whatever the family is doing for those days that they're there yes so they completely become part of that home some of them even have still have that connection, that connection. even now and yes. this is what this is in the 90s. 90s. Wow. Yeah, they still have that connection and they still go on. Yeah. I know one particular one who now has children and takes the children to the family that he stayed with. Oh my he God. lives in Georgia. So yeah. it was a very enriching program. Yeah. I know several of them after having gone to, you know, they live here from, you know, born and brought up in the US. They got to a country like Kenya mm -hmm. and realize how do down to earth people are. Yeah. They go back and completely sh change their career path. Oh my God. Some went to the Peace Call, some went to do charity work other yeah. places. They really, really, a lot of them changed That's true. because we gave them what really happens on the, yeah, ground. on the ground. So what they were doing, they would do a comparative study. Okay. So their paper would be a comparative study between environmental environment and development work in Kenya versus the United States, okay. a specific area in the United States. Okay. So we worked with Wangari Madai, she was one of my mentors, yeah. and uh, several other people in okay. the wildlife field. Wow. So, yeah, so that's, that's what I did then, then okay. switched over, you know, after a period of time when I moved back here permanently. Yes. I decided, okay, I'm done with the, with that world. Yes. Not that I didn't like it, but I did not work like corporate life. Okay, okay. So, because even then, you know, part of the tour company was a consultancy. consultancy. So I worked for the American <laughs> University, but I was a contractor, cons a contractor on, the market, as a, on, yes. the, on the wildlife, on oh. the, on the, tour, on the part. tour part of it. So yes. with that, I grew up my entrepreneurship. Okay. And also, actually, I also had... I've had many businesses. In yeah, Kenya, I yeah. had, I used to make pastries. Yes. So I would bake cakes and I would make pastry meat pies, all that kind of thing, and sell. Mm -hmm. I had a pastry shop. Yes. And then, actually, when I left high school, you know, the, well, you guys are young. <laughs> but when I left A-levels, yes. between A-level and going to college, we used to wait for a period of time. Okay. During that period of time, I went to, okay. I started making embroidery. Okay. You know those, Victor, you know, in, Kenyans in love Kamba, to decorate yes. their homes. Ile machine ya singa. Yes. Ile <laughs> so I learned how to do that. Yeah. So I used to make those tablecloths okay. and sell. Oh, wow. Even to a point, even when I finished college, I would pay my rent from from selling clothes other than touching my salary. Oh my like goodness. your mom, eh? Yeah. Your mom. He does that. Your mom used to your do that. Your mom used to do that. Yeah, so between that and then later on selling pastries and that kind of thing, I made a, I 
you know, did my, and of course the, the, the oh. tourism. I also did, uh, in between the time, between the students coming from the university and my, you know, waiting for the next law, because I only work during the fall season. So okay. I, w I only work for five months a year. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the time, you know, I did yeah. whatever I wanted to do. So yeah. during that other time, my little tour company, company I used to take children on tour. Oh. So I had children between the age of three to 14. Oh. I would take them around Nairobi to the Giraffe Center to mm. National Park, you know, rent a vehicle because I had a smaller car, but I would rent a minibus and I would take, take these them. kids all over for a small fee. I, I, and I would make, what, I would make, um, what are they called? Sandwiches and I buy drinks for ah. them and we'd have a picnic. So yeah. we had, so my entrepreneurial life started way back way when. Ba mm -hmm. Where did so, you get this from? Mom, dad, uncle? No, where? Actually, just, none of them. Really? None of them. No, none of them are entrepreneurs. Oh no, my, my parents goodness. have never been entrepreneurs. I think it's just something, I don't know. Well, I, I probably would say that um, I grew up in, in, in boarding school. Okay. You know, we went yeah. to boarding school when we were young. And I always had, um, you know, when, when, with the nuns, so I went to, to schools that were run by nuns. Yes. They always emphasized the independence. Ah. They always emphasized the fact that you need to be able to stand on your own. You okay. need to be able to do this and that. You need, you should not be dependent. Okay. And I think that's partly where, where I got it. got it. They didn't the quite mindset. plant the entrepreneurial, entrepreneur. but the independence and the freedom the part of thing. Work, yes. Where, uh, you know, I think, and then also when, between that time, when I left college, I worked with, um, I worked, actually, I was going to college and working for um, the Rainbow Magazine. I don't know if any of you remember, of you, you, oh <laughs> Rainbow Magazine, <laughs> do you know it? <laughs> Rainbow Magazine was a children's magazine. Okay. Did you ever hear of the Weekly Review? Yes, yes. Weekly Review, yes. So, the owner of the Weekly Review was Hilary Nguyeno. Okay. His wife, Fla Nguyeno, was an environmentalist. Okay. And she was my mentor. Okay. She owned, uh, she used to write a children's magazine. So while I was going to college, I worked for her part time. Okay. Okay. And um, I would edit and write stories and things like that. Okay. So from her and the, the people that hang around her, being entrepreneurs, I think that's where some of it may, although really it was there, but she kind of made it bloom. Okay, okay. Let me say, she made it bloom because she showed me the entrepreneurial oh, side because yes. being her daughter, after completing college, she was in Harvard, came back to Kenya. We are the same age. She started the first internet company in Kenya. It was oh. called Africa Online. Wow. Her, wow. Yes, she started that. Oh, wow. And she's a, she's a mogul right now. She's, yeah. she, she runs wow. her father's businesses and her own businesses. Yeah. But that um that freedom of you know like you can do this go go get it you know it's yeah. like nothing should hold you hold back you, you should back. be able to get up and go yeah was because i think the people I interacted with while i was going to college and while i was in between you know all that i did not very much interact with a lot of kenyans okay. not because i did not want as far as professional yeah. but it's like where things were the leading you are leading you so i ended up with mrs mueno who was introduced to me by somebody in the wildlife okay you know in the wildlife field okay. which i was training in yeah. i got to meet people from all ah, over the world i got to meet so many people from all over the world and when you change. have that open world mind and you kind of absorb from all these people. Yeah, you you don't completely think the same. Yes. have a different yes. outlook Mindset. to things. Yeah. Exactly. And that's why they say, you know, like you hang out with five millionaires, you'll be the sixth you'll millionaire. You'll be the sixth one. <laughs> if you hang out with five fools, you'll be the sixth you'll fool. The sixth fool. <laughs> so you have to have a different mindset. And so I kind of got that, although, you know, I'm getting there. Yeah. I do claim my million next amen, year. Amen. Amen. So the oh, Ken well, glad in Kenya, to hang around you in, too. in Kenya, in, uh, that's an American millionaire. Because because I have been a millionaire yeah. in Kenya. Kenya yes. Yeah, so basically, so let me go back to the. So, um, so with, the, with the people I, I hung around, you know, there were some entrepreneurs, there were people who had made it in life and kind of like gave me this thing, like if they can do it, why can't I? Yeah. So, 
on moving back or moving to the United States permanently. I moved it back as a single parent because my my marriage at, the, at that time, you know, dissolved and, you know, I was in charge of my child. Okay. And I thought, if I go back to to corporate life, okay. I had a job at the, at the World Wide Fund for Nature office in D.C. Yes. But I was like, this is a corporate job. Yeah. It's an eight to five job. It will require me to travel. I mm. don't have somebody to take care Kill of my, my two and a half year yeah. old child. And I want to be there a hundred percent for him. So I had to make a choice to look for something that will allow me to give, that give me that flexibility, flexibility and freedom to be with him and Still continue to work. Living, yes. So I moved from DC area to here. Okay. What year you is know, this now? This is now two thousand. Two thousand. Okay. Two thousand. Okay. So I moved from DC. I moved. To, I moved to here. You know to. Actually, at the time, I was looking for a school. Okay. That time, nursing was like the big thing. They were giving <laughs> money all over, like, come to, to and go, become yes. a nurse. Come. Yes. Kenyans and everybody was becoming a nurse. Yes. Because, I mean, you would come, you would land in the United States today. Within a week, you would get a scholarship and a school to study nursing. Oh there was my. desperation for nurses. Wow. So, so many people switched their careers. Into and nursing. into nursing. Even the, the pe person who hosted me had done political science and all that. She Just was switch. now switched and she was, <laughs> at the time she was studying for her LPN. Mm. But in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, do I really want to do this? Do yeah. I want somebody else to control my time? Mm. Uh, so I went back to the beginning. I became, I worked at JCPenney as I was thinking all of this. Yes. And then went and worked for when I decided now I want to into massage school, okay. I want to do this, I went to, um, I started working as a CNA. Because then I could, yeah. I had the freedom of time. Okay. I would work at night, mm -hmm. and surprisingly, the place I worked would allow me to take my son with me. Ah, so I took my son to work at night with me, nice. came home in the morning, got ready, took him to daycare, daycare and I went, went to, school. to school. By the time I'm done with school at four, He's ready to get out of school. So I would come out at four, go to the library, read for like an hour and a half, pick, pick him, him up, up from daycare just before six. Go we go home, go home yeah. cook, eat, sleep for a few hours, go, go back, back to work. That was our cycle. Oh my gosh. Wow. And so a one and a half year program, I was able to narrow that down and I did a, uh, a compressed program and I finished in seven months. In seven months. I graduated. And as soon as I graduated, I opened my first office. Your first. So, so the business, the reason why you chose massage uh, to become a massage therapist was because of the flexibility that you saw and the opportunity to start a business? Or was there something that was pulling you towards massage therapy? So, of course, uh, being, uh, in Kenya, and in Kenya, you know, when you have certain jobs, you have money. Yes. So you are able to experience different things. Okay. So I, I knew the world of massage, you know, ah, from going to the spa, I was okay. a member of Maisha at Serena yes. and all of that. Yes. So I used to go and get massage. But there's something more I knew about massage that most people, people did not. Didn't know. Massage was used traditionally as a medical practice. Ah. My neighbor, who is not like an auntie, in, in up country used to come and massage my grandmother. My grandmother did not go to hospital. Mm. That lady, she's still alive today. She's like a mother to me. She's like, I call her auntie. She would come and massage my, my grandmother. Oh my goodness. And so I would see this and like, you know, kunakitu. Yes. There's something here. Kunakitu. And of course, when I talk with my mom, when I talked with my mom and even my grandmother, at the, you know, before she passed, about, my grandparents are all passed. Mm. But she would talk about a lady during the early days, even my mother still talks about her. She was a, a relative, I don't remember how we were related, but a, a relative, a blood relative, mm -hmm. was like the medicine, the, 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 I would call it like the, the medicine person of the area. Okay. She used herbs and she used massage, you know, to a point where when you're pregnant and the child is breech, she was able to actually reposition the child oh, to actually be born wow. naturally. Wow. And then there was also an, an older person, and my mom actually, I was home earlier this year, and my mother was telling me about, and she's told me this several times, there was a, an older guy, an older man in the community, again, who used to do 
who use who would massage people okay. with with the uh, with herbs and oils. Yes. And they would get well. Wow. Wow. So I knew I knew there's something there. Yes. And at some time when I massaged my grandmother when I was home, she would tell you, you massage like the people of the old. Oh my so I was goodness. like, hmm, hmm, there's something here. Yeah. There's something here. <laughs> and this was even before I came yes. to massage to, to live here permanently and become yeah. a massage therapist. Yeah. I remember my brother in law was very sick and in the hospital. And, um, and, and you know, we went to see him and I was massaging him. Yes his heart his arms because yes. he was very tired yes so i was massaging his arms and he said you know i feel like i'm healing yeah so oh, i kept wow. thinking you know later on is when i was thinking about all of these things and i'm like there maybe there was something there pushing me in that direction okay. my grandfather used to use a lot of herbs yes even for his cut yes. cattle and even for my grandfather mother when she was sick and all of that we used a lot of herbs so this natural healing thing has always been in me somehow